Good morning. It's Wednesday, 7th of November. We're in the middle of a heat wave. It's the last day of it, thank goodness, because it's been uh, 40 degrees yesterday in our particular area. And it's only spring still. We're, we just had a taste of summer. I'm used to this heat, but not so early in the season. But I've made this video that I'm not going to show you guys. It was a flop. And I, um, here, look, I'll show you what it was. Microgreens outside growing in the garden full sun full soil i had flopped hey and um i'm i'm sort of i'm not impressed with it and it was a failure and i'm not afraid to admit it so there you go I, you may not think it looks like a flop but it, it was to me because as opposed or compared to what i grow inside these are going to be hard to harvest and uh there's a lot of dirt to deal with there and uh, i'm just not happy with it but i'll show you what i did on top of a bit of a look around a bit of an update and something exciting i want to tell you is it's a little premature but i can't hold it in any longer because i've grown something i want to show you as well and um talk about that so let's get into it Hey, check this out. I know it's not microgreens, guys, but look, a cucumber. But this is a Lebanese, that plant over there, and there's four of them. Two of them are continental cucumbers, these two are Lebanese, and guess what I did? I crossed it. <laughs> and it's been heavily inspired by my mate Brent from Hydroponic Gardening and More. He, um, he does some great breeding work. I suggest you all check his channel out. I'll put the link in the description. And I'm sure a lot of you already know who he is. But I've uh, taken some male flowers from the continental and um, crossed it with the female, the Lebanese. And I'm really hoping I get this Lebanese flavor with a big continental volume to it. So we'll see how that goes. There you go, Brent. Thanks for the inspiration. Guys, buddy. quick look at this. I'm going to wrap this part of the video up, this little experiment. But look, here is an order going out today. There's five varieties in pots there, and four of them are what are actually growing here, apart from that cress on the end. But the difference, okay. Red Rambo Radish versus Red Rambo Radish. Can you tell the difference? These are growing outside in my 70% shade cloth shade house. So they're getting sunlight, but not it's definitely filtered. This is 100% sunlight. The redness in those leaves is just amazing. And the volume of the leaf, it's huge compared to, maybe if I pull one out. Oh yeah, there's not that much difference in volume, I guess, because these are getting some natural light. But the color is just more intense. And for example here, red cabbage, as opposed to red cabbage. Like, there's the stem there. And the stem in there, oh, you can't even, see, can you just see that? It's like, it's true colors and it's beautiful, but it's just so short. <laughs> this is purple Osaka mustard. The stem's quite uh, white, but the leaves are gorgeous as opposed to purple Osaka mustard. Just not quite as uh, luminous and bright in color. And this one, purple kohlrabi, that stem, wow. That is just beautiful, as opposed to purple kohlrabi, which, you know, portrays its, its nature, but it's just not the same. These ones are much taller. The chef I grow this for likes it long because he can decide on his stem length. I've started collecting some great photos from this guy of how he uses them, and some stems are very long and some are short, so I give him the option to play with there. But here, I'm, I'm limited to a very short stem for us to do this commercially. And last year, I got some um, rocket arugula. It's turned out all right. It's probably hard to see, but it's getting that pink stem for this variety, which is a wild uh, rocket. 
But there you go, you know, look at the difference, if you can tell. I want them like this, out here. That would be fantastic, but I really think I've got to build a frame with some shade cloth. And this is all because of where I live. I can't say this had happened to you somewhere else. But, uh, yeah, that's my little floppy experiment. All these I'm going to put in my tummy, and they sh I'm sure they'll be yummy. I just think it's going to be hard with such a short stem to harvest and not get dirt. and uh, It's going to be a drama. All right, guys, that concludes that. Better luck next time for me. Okay, come into my shade house. This is one of them. And here I've got primarily red vein sorrel coming up through the ages. Grown in this 70% shade cloth outside as I like it. And um, I want to show you something. Hey, can you see the difference here? Beautiful red veins. A little less red veins. There's only a couple of days difference here, but I did this on purpose because I was really curious. This is typical red vein sorrel seed grown in the micro stage, or baby leaf. And this is a new variety, I'll show you now. Sorrel Micro Vein from Fairbanks Seeds. It's an Australian company down south, but they've promised that this is for microgreen growers to achieve a more prominent red vein in a, in a tiny baby leaf form as opposed to your average, oh, they've been cut, your uh, typical red vein sorrel seed. I love it guys, this, this leaf is much more hardier, it's much more red veined, and I can send it out looking true to form much earlier than, than the typical seed. Now this is wonderful for your garden to grow full red vein sorrel, oh wow, it grows out beautifully. But for this, A plus for microgreen growers. Check it out. I'm sure you can get it in all around the world, but for Australian growers, sorrel micro vein, A plus. Also, I got some lemon balm happening. A few Australian growers I've seen doing this are uh, marketing it as a dessert microgreen. I had some seed and I thought I'll put it in. It was very slow and um, it's picking up pace now. It's warming up, but delicious lemony flavor and um, I'm going to take this into a chef see what he thinks I haven't really sold any of this yet but the flavor wow so strong and there's some older red vein sorrel going to the garden but this one Mitsuba a Japanese parsley flavor reminiscent of say coriander and um, flat leaf parsley and um, I quite like it actually the leaf is um, unique in itself it has that parsley look but the flavor is just crazy and you know again I'm I'm gonna try and market this soon these are just the trial pots I've eaten two of them myself <laughs> and um, we'll see what happens but this is where I'd like to send it out the I've pulled one out here to show you but the the cotyledon just looks like a coriander leaf it's quite um, you know I don't know if you want flavor it's all there but if for looks you know you could Wait for this true leaf to get your real uh, appeal to your dish, maybe. But if it's all there, you got options. So win-win. <laughs> all right. So there's two new varieties plus that microvein sorrel. Uh, check them out. All right, guys. Super quick. An unofficial plug, and I'm seeking expressions of interest from Australian growers. Now, Australian growers, thank you for uh, sticking by me through my journey with microgreens and. And I've done something that may help us all out. American growers, you are truly blessed. Seriously, you have the best of the best. And um, from my perspective, when I watch your videos, I sit there just going, wow, I want some of that. But I've tried to buy your products in bulk from your companies, from your people, and with Australian import taxes versus your cut and then my cut, whatever, to resell, they would be priced ridiculous over here. And that is not something I want to be will have my name to as, as a rip-off guy. So, my own tray. This is what I've done, guys. 150 emails later, a whole bunch of thought, samples, testing, trials. Watch this. <laughs> There's no other way I can show you. I love it when John Dowie smashes his trays on the bench, you know, um, just proving how strong they are. I could do that too, but you can't see it. Um, yeah, I've grown some microgreens in it. 
I've done a few varieties now, but this is Osaka Mustard. They're so amazing, guys. I've been drooling over your thin trays because you use hardly any soil. The microgreens sit above the lip and you could harvest with a knife instead of me having to dig into the typical Australian nursery tray and I'm reluctant to put six centimetres of soil in them because it's just not, it's a waste. And now it's just all easy. And anyway, they're suitable for hydroponic growers. You can put your cocoa corn mats here or however you do it. They're just perfect for that. They're um, UV treated, so they're going to be okay for going outdoors. Basically, I thought Australian. Our weather is just extreme. Our environment is different to the rest of the world. So I've put all those um, considerations into the building of this tray. Now, they're still 20 days away. It's an unofficial announcement. I've got a bunch coming with 30 holes and I've got a bunch coming with no holes so it'll be a drip tray. Uh, the drip trays are tough enough that you can put the drill through and it won't twist. Uh, the corners are so tough that <coughs> I can't explain it guys. I'm going to make another video soon enough closer to the date of arrival and uh, showing you a few things I've done with this tray like house bricks and all this stuff, how much I can hold in there with, without even seeing a stress mark in it. But anyway, that's enough about this. I just wanted to let you know what I've been up to. I'm looking for expressions expressions of interest from any Australian viewers. Uh, send me an email at pepifasos or pepifasos at gmail.com or Instagram at 560farms. Follow me on there and send me a message. Um, I'm pretty active over at Instagram at the moment. Um, just because it's easy to post a photo, but there it is. I've been around, I'm working hard, and uh, I'm going to leave it at that. So thanks for sticking around, and um, as always, get healthy. And I want to add, stay hungry to succeed. Get tasty. Talk to you soon. Thanks, guys. Cheers.